Hey, True Believers. Today we are going over X-Force issue 9. In this book, just like the current arc of what we've been reading, is excellent. There's a lot that this uh, book was trying to say, and I'm a little disappointed that uh, future writers really did not pick up the ball and run with it. Now, before we dive into why this book is awesome, let's talk about who made it. This is Rob Liefeld Gilligan, Don Panzanosian, the skipper, Fabian Akizia, the millionaire, well, actually, like I said, Fabian Nikesia and Chris Yiannopoulos, the millionaire, and his wife. Steve Buccoletto, the movie star. Bob Harris, the professor. And Tom DeFalco, Marianne. For the younger generation that doesn't get the joke, that it was the, the entire cast of Gilligan's Island. That's hilarious. <laughs> and I miss when the writers would kind of bring you in, throw a subtle joke like that, and then just kind of make you laugh as you dive into this really dark book. So spoilers if you've not read any of these. If you haven't and you want to know what happens, pause this review. Go check out the prior ones that we've done. I'll leave cards throughout this review. Go get the books and then come back. Now, Sauron, um, Mask, Thorin, Ur, Blob, and there's another one. I can't remember her name. But essentially it's supposed to be a meet, It's supposed to be a team up between the Morlocks and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So that they could bring down humankind. And in the crossfires of X-Force trying to stop them, Sauron impels Cannonball. Now last issue, you would think that we'd be following through with this. No, what happens is we get a flashback to when Cable came back to this time. And the whole reason that he came back to this time is because Sam is supposed to be a high lord and external. Kind of like how, um, God, what are their names, Gideon? Um, Selene and the blonde one, Kendra. Kendra that, that was kind of pitting the uh, Thieves Guild against the Assassins Guild in Gambit. Um, Sam is supposed to be one of those. So right now Cable is essentially trying to do everything that he can to save Sam, kind of leaving the X-Force to take on the villains. And the artwork overall is beautiful, though it this point of Cable, he looks more like the Pillsbury Doughboy than the Cable that we know. But as you can see, the artwork's awesome. Thorin's talking about how... Uh, yeah, that's her name. Um, when you try to attack one of us, we always have each other's backs. And then I love how Domino says, what's good for you is the same for X-Force. Because she just kind of comes out of nowhere. She says, now get up. Because I'm just in the right mood to deal with you. What do you hope to accomplish here? And she talks about how the partnership between the Brotherhood and the Morlocks. <clears throat> and I love how Dom just essentially says, How does destroying us help your cause? We're all supposed to be fighting on the same side. For the betterment of mutants. Idiots. All of you. Total idiots. It's good stuff. Good stuff right there. And so yeah, this book essentially, other than kind of the, the talking is fighting to kind of resolve this invasion on X-Force's headquarters. And again, just say what you will about the artwork of this time. We didn't realize how good we had, had it compared to a lot of modern books where it just seems like they, they pulled artwork from Tumblr, essentially. And yeah, I mean, it could be better. Blob is interesting looking, but overall, look at how they had to try. This was the early stages of digital art. A lot of this was still done by hand. Look at, um, oh God, what's his name? Warpath and Siren and Shatterstar and the dynamicness of the panels drawing the Marvel way using motion action lines. And then what I like about X-Force compared to X-Men, I love X-Men, don't get me wrong, but I like how K, uh, Shatterstar, for example, you know, coming from a war world, has no scruples that like Scott or Gene or any other X Men have, and just tries to give uh, Blob a Chelsea grin. And he's like, "Have I found a weak spot among all those soft spots, Blob? Maybe you did, kid. Not many of you hero types goes for the mouth. I guess the X groups I'm used to fight and operate in a different set of rules than you do." And because of that, he flees. 
because he just realized that X Force does not screw around like the X Men do, where the X Men try to find a peaceful full resolution. This team does not. And look at this. Look at that. Feral versus Sauron. Whew. Gorgeous, dynamic artwork. And again, to kind of put a, a strong period on how X Force is different than the X Factor or the X Men, Cable says, I'm the kind of animal that'll do whatever it takes to survive the fight. Because he essentially takes down Feral's sister. But Feral, as you can see, Thorin takes part of Cable's face. And you can tell this was a. February of 1992 because <clears throat> as we find out later all this here is the techno-organic virus infecting Cable but at the time I think it was just to show that he was half machine and you could see the T1 or the T800 just written all over his face there and it just really helps enhance how Cable coming from this dystopian future is just not going to screw around and neither are his teammates, as we see here, Shatterstar impaling Mask. And Warpath Mask, since you were never an honorable opponent, you do not deserve an honorable death. Guys, this book just absolutely phenomenal. I don't want to spoil it because there's just some great moments overall. Um, the way that Cable is just fixated on Sam, saying essentially that in order for your new life to begin as a High Lord, you have to die. And he gives reasons to why there's clues that he's a, a High Lord. Talking about how he couldn't control, how he can't control his cannon blasts here in the beginning. Just some really great ideas. And I'm irritated that as this version of X-Force phased out, they retconned Sam being an external. I really think that would have been a great progression of his character going from team leader of the New Mutants, becoming more mature and a leader of X-Force, to basically becoming like this godlike status. It just would have been really interesting to see someone that has morals and values and how he'd butt up against like Kendra or Selim or Gideon. But that's my take on it, guys. What do you think? If you've enjoyed this comic book, please first and foremost support your local comic shop and pick up a copy. If you have enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little Zaz vid bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys get notified. Come to the channel, and we love talking with you all and hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading and happy hunting, true believers.